All right, let's go into it. What's the day's date we have here? It's so at what, December 21st? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I think it's about time we go into a complete understanding of what we call Christmas, of what the world call, call Christmas. Um, at one point in history, at one point in time, the children of Israel, God's chosen people, the people who were saved uh, from the hand of Pharaoh and went into the land of Canaan and separated themselves from the gods of the Egyptians and the nations. These particular people, the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, knew nothing of what you would call Christmas as a day of worship for their particular people. Now, a lot of us out there might be confused and think, well, the Jewish people don't celebrate Christmas uh, today because a lot of uh, Western churches teach that the Jewish people are the Israelites, that they don't celebrate Christmas because they don't follow Christ. But really, they do celebrate a form of Christmas through their Hanukkah. You understand? But the Hebrew Israelites, the people of the Bible, which we are, our foreparents did not celebrate or operate in the spirit of Christmas. A matter of fact, you're going to find out today that Christmas have nothing to do with Christ at all. We're going to go into the Bible. We're going to break a few things down. It won't take long to break this down. But our key emphasis or key source of emphasis concerning this topic will be today the two Babylons. The Papal worship. The two Babylons, the Papal worship. And the, it says, proved to be the worship of Nimrod and Nimrod's wife slash mother. Now, some people might ask, well, what is the relation between the papacy or the Roman Catholic Church in ancient Babylon and Nimrod and Nimrod's wife? Understand this, that the majority of the world, especially the Western world, have been conquered by Romans. So when you're conquered by a people, you are forced to follow the ideologies and the gods who empower that particular nation. Okay? <laughs> the example I can give you, going back to what we were saying earlier, when Christ come back and he will purge the earth through fire, when Christ come to set up a government, all earth, every tongue, every knee shall, come, shall bow, there will be one way of worship. For, by not just Israel, but all nations who are left in this earth. So the conqueror dictates what's followed. So the question is, especially to the Christians who might run into this video, are we following the Christ of the Bible or are we following the gods of our conquerors? Or are we worshiping the gods of our conquerors? Are we really worshiping the God of the Bible by celebrating Christmas? That is the question. And you're going to see by the end of this, the answer is emphatically no. Christmas have nothing to do with Christ. It have nothing to do with the Christ in the Bible. It have nothing to do with Mary in the Bible. So let's go. We're going to start off and we're going to just more so emphasize. Matter of fact, let's start from the beginning. Uh, sections 1, Christmas and Lady Day. Now, this is chapter 3 concerning festivals. Now, this book is real good because... It goes into each festival of ancient Babylon and related to the festivals we have in modern day Rome, which is slash Babylon, America, England. See that? Now, Alexander 
Hislop is the author. And as you can see, it says Reverend Alexander Hislop. Reverend Alexander Hislop. So this was a pastor, a minister, who did the research on what he thought was Christ's birthday. And it led him down a rabbit hole to realize all the holy days that are worshipped in our Western world society are pagan and satanic. And he related the Roman rule, the Roman ideologies, and he paralleled, he paralleled that with ancient Babylon and realized that the modern day America and Western world are all pagans, are all worshiping Nimrod and Nimrod's wife slash mother. You understand? And he put it together through sources. Now, what happened, and see, a lot of us don't understand what happened because at one time, Christmas was not celebrated as it is today. What happened was, under Sigmund Freud and his people, which were straight psychologists, they came up with a new program in the turn of the, uh, the 20th century. They came up with a new program that would sensationalize this Babylonian worship. So they got some, 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 some musicians together. They used a black and white screen, which they called color, I mean, with, with moving pictures. And they used commercialized, commercialization as a way that the people within the Western world construct would, would embrace this worship. They started... Uh, 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 paying some of the greatest talent to come up with the greatest songs, some of the greatest plays, some heartfelt plays during that time of year that would endear the enslaved population to this Babylonian worship, to this ancient Roman worship. And through it, we began to believe what they put before us was the spirit of God, the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of tradition and family when that was created so that we can follow something more sinister. Right? Get Revelations 13 real quick for me. First of all, we should follow nothing that comes from Rome. The Roman imperialists are the enemies of God. They're the same people, the Jesuits and the Romans, that went out throughout the earth, destroying, killing, raping, killing the ancient men who had history and understanding to only teach their children how to bow and worship them as gods. So we should take nothing they give us as tradition. The Romans are enemies of the Creator. Let's get read Romans 13 and 1, I mean, uh, Revelations 13 and 1 real quick. Revelations chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Hold on, let me see here. Get this. One moment. Let me get the one where it talks about the whore. That's it, 17. Uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows. Revelation told, 17 and 1, in correction. Go ahead. Uh, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I will show thee what? The judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And it says, I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. To show you that this great whore will bring something to different continents. Will set up and establish their ideologies and worship on different continents. When they go into an area, it's not to defend or to protect the people. It's to actually set their ideology in their worships and their imperialistic thinking and spread it throughout the earth like ancient Rome. This is what they do. Read. 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Go ahead. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And the inhabitants, that means the people living on the earth like you and I, like regular people, have become what? Drunk. Have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is the wine of her fornication? The wine of her fornication is the philosophies that lead to worshiping fallen angels, demons, gods, the gods that are worshipped by the Romans, the gods that were worshipped by ancient Babylonians. Read. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now that seven heads represents what? The seven mountains of Rome. The ten horns represents what? All the countries that were absorbed in Rome. That made it an imperialistic power to destroy all the, the surrounding countries. You're talking, about, uh, uh, you're talking about Belgium, Netherlands, Great Britain, France, Spain. On and on and on. These European countries. Read. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with precious stones and pearls go ahead having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations full of abominations which are lies and when they go to destroy and take down from country to country they bring that cup they bring that chalice of lies they set up what a church and a hospital they set up that chalice of lies read Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations. Full of abominations. And filthiness of her fornication. Go ahead. And upon her forehead was, was a name written. Mystery, Babylon the Great. And why does it say Mystery Babylon the Great? Because in our modern time, there's a question of who's Babylon. So they would hide their intent. They would have the same ideology as Rome and Babylon. But no one would be able to identify them distinctly and say, well, that's who they are. But the Bible does identify them. It's a mystery to those who are deceived. Read. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth. Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth. Now listen to this clearly now, because some people might say, well, yeah, it's talking about Rome. Even the Christian churches now are coming out and separating themselves from the Roman Catholic Church saying, well, that was Rome. Well, you are right, but this is one thing you are ignoring. She was riding a beast and went on other waters. So by you just going to Rome, you're missing the point. Rome was, America was built out of Rome. That's why it's a mystery. America is not written in the scriptures as America. It's the little horn out of Rome. Now let me tell you, Rome never celebrated Christmas as good and well as America. A matter of fact, America had become what Rome dreamed of. That was the dream of Rome before it was wounded. Okay? Rome didn't have Whitney Houston singing Merry Christmas. Okay? Rome didn't have all the great musicians of the earth, like it tell you in Revelations, the 18th chapter, to promote its paganism. All over the earth. Why? There was no resources back then where you can have a great singer from Rome be heard throughout the whole earth. There was no technology back then. But we know that she was carried on a scarlet colored beast to a place we call America, who would assume and bring the life, the dream of Rome, the dream of Babylon. Now, go back to where it talks about that, that wine in that cup real quick. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. Go ahead. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. Go ahead. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, 
having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations. Full of abominations. And, now, now go ahead. And filthiness of her fornication. So what is in this wine? Let's go into Isaiah when it speaks of they stagger. Mm -hmm. So she brought a cup to the slaves. Once she conquered, she brought a cup to the slaves. What was in this cup? Filthiness according to the book of Revelations. Read. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29 verse 9. Stay yourselves in wonder. So Isaiah is saying stay yourselves in wonder. He's speaking of our people. God's people, the people of the Bible. He's wondering at how these people have fell from such greatness. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. Our people, God's people are drunken, but not with wine. Read. They stagger, but not with strong drink. That proved to you that that wine is not speaking of a physical liquid. It's speaking of a philosophy that's destroying the people. They stagger, but not with what? With strong drink. It's not with strong drink. It's that philosophy in the cup that make you wander from mountain to hill looking for a God, looking for who you are. Who have given you this cup to the point where you don't even understand who you are and don't care? That's what Isaiah is seeing here. You've been drunk. By who? By the mother whore and her harlots because she had to set up other harlots. She's the mother of harlots. So she had to set up other churches, even churches that relates to you so that you can embrace that wine. That's your Baptist church. That's your Pentecostal church. That's your Christian church. No matter what denomination it is, you still have that wine in your cup because the majority of you are celebrating Christmas. God didn't give you Christmas. Christ didn't give you. Christ never said make a day to celebrate for me. Did he? No. Someone brought you a philosophy and there's something behind that. But go ahead. Uh, back to Isaiah 29 and 10. For the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Because you've drunken on that wine. Now you're walking around in a sleep, a slumber. That was the purpose of the Roman imperialist. They can only rule over you through ignorance. You must be void of your history and understanding and, history, and be void of your holy days to follow. How can, you, and how can we embrace the Roman holy days and ignore the, the, the holy days that's actually in the Bible? Oh, they're done away with and you're not following God if you follow those holy days. A matter of fact, I'll tell you what, unless you're in Israel, you're not even supposed to follow the holy days. But yet, everyone have, have embraced paganism. Read. For the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Go ahead. And have closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers. And that's the people that's in the churches who are supposed to be leaders, who the people go to for spiritual understanding and guidance. They are blind. They're blind. They're in the church with Christmas trees and follow la la lies and having you feel some emotional trip over this, over this time of year, which is really going into the time of the Aquarius, the Baphomet, the worship of Satan. It's a shame because a lot of them mean well, but and they, they didn't go into the research like Alexander Hislop to realize that if I'm going to follow the Most High and teach others to, I must first understand whether or not what we were taught is correct. At least he examined Christmas. Who's going to celebrate Christ's birthday and not go into the, into the depths of Christ on that day and understand whether or not it's his day? It was never about Christ. And some people try to claim, well, I, I'm just dealing with the reason for the season and I want to bring it back to what it used to be. Christmas was never about Christ. So what are you bringing it back to? Trying to tell me you're going to bring Christ back in Christmas. Christ was never in Christmas. Read. Go, let's go to Jeremiah real quick. Uh, about the harlots. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 7. Read. 
How shall I pardon thee for this? The Most High asked us. He, no, he told us. How shall he pardon us for this? We began to follow the ways of the Babylonians. Read. Thy children have forsaken me. Thy children have forsaken me. And swore by, sworn by them that are no gods. And have sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops and the harlots' houses. And that's a spiritual fornication when it says adultery. That's linking yourself with another god. That's like a woman going out with another man. And it says our people began to assemble themselves in where? By troops. By troops. That means by the droves like your mega churches. In what? In the harlots' houses. In the whore houses. That's what the Most High called the churches. Because you only go there to go a whoring with other gods to sip that chalice, to sip the wine of Babylon. Let me tell you, like I said a couple of weeks ago, this, the spirit of Christmas is very deep because it, it can suck in. It can just suck you in because you are bombarded with it. Why would an institution or a country go through so much to have you sucked into that particular day? Especially a capitalistic society that, that doesn't waste money. That means money means everything to them, but they'll give so that everyone can volunteer and bring their spirit in it to it. And you don't understand what that means. By you participating, you're giving those kings of the earth power over you for the next year. See, that's why when you, when, when you work at the end of the year, they give you a little bonus or they take you to a Christmas party and now the boss must serve you. That's part of a Babylonian ritual because they'll serve you for one day in exchange for you, for you serving them for the whole year. It's Babylonian. So you thought they, man, I'm, he, he let his hair down at the Christmas party. Your boss. Oh, man, he's so nice. Then he come up to you and smile and give you a, a Christmas card with a little bonus check in it or call you in his office saying you did great this year. Sucking you in. When really it's not about it, it's it's a, it's it's an exchange for your servitude for next year. And they're thanking the gods. That was ancient Rome. Look it up. Ancient Rome. All the hierarchies for that time of the year doing Cetronella, Cetronella, for one day had to actually serve their servants. They would give them gifts. Look it up. They would serve once a year, and then the servants yielded the rest because they, oh, what a good master. I'm going to make sure I treat him. He's so nice. Let's get back into it now. Let's go into the festivals. Speaking of the relation and the two Babylons, as you can see here, Alexander Hislop. And let's start at page 91. Let's start at the top in Rome. In Rome be indeed the Babylon of the Apocalypse and the Madonna enshrined in her sanctuaries to be the very queen of heaven, for the worshiping of whom the fierce anger of God was provoked against the Jews in the days of Jeremiah. It is of the last consequence that the fact should be established beyond all possibility of doubt, for that being once established, everyone who trembles at the word of God must sh shudder at the very thought of giving such a system, either individually or nationally the least countenance or support. Something has been said already that goes far to prove the identity of the Roman and Babylonian systems. But at, the, but at every step, the evidence becomes still more overwhelming. That which arises from comparing the different festivals is peculiarly, uh, peculiarly uh, so. Uh, next paragraph. The festivals of Rome are innumerable. But five are the most important, may be singled out for elucidation. Now, it tell you, the festivals of Rome are what? 
uh, the festivals of Rome are innumerable. Are innumerable. And let me tell you, I, I went through, th through this in the academy one day. And I talked to the people in the academy because I had a sheet paralleling all the, all the, the holy days, the holidays of Rome. And you parallel them next to all the holidays in America. And you'll realize that the holidays in America are not what they're telling you. Just like the majority of people were crying about Martin Luther King, giving Martin Luther King a birthday. Come to find out, they finally gave, gave Martin Luther King a birthday on the same day as some worship of some guy, some, some fallen deity in ancient Rome. On the same day as Martin Luther King's birthday, it, it was worshipped in ancient Rome as something else. So, it, so they'll do anything to have the people acknowledge that God on that day, which empowers the kings of this earth. So they'll give you a holiday and make you think it's something else, but really, they're sacrificing to an ancient God. So all their holy days, all their holidays are evil. Every last one. Okay, and I say their holy days because a lot of you don't even understand that that's what they are. I is synonymous with why. So they'll tell you to denounce and just get rid of the holy days in the Bible while you're freely celebrating holy days of the pagans and the Satanist over our system. See? Read. Uh, the festivals of Rome are innumerable. But five of the most important may be singled out for elucidation. Okay, we are on page 91. Page 91 and the book, The Two Babylons. But f even though there's innumerable uh, holy days that they had, they had in ancient satanic Rome, five are actually elevated above them all. Go ahead. Christmas Day. Christmas Day, numero uno. Numero uno. And let me tell you, boy, it's something about Christmas. You know it's a deep spirit. Because it overcomes the majority of the population and make you feel a certain type of way. One way or the other. Every year. Start bringing all types of things into mind. Of how you feel in a certain type of way because... You know, family tradition and, uh, you know, I'm depressed and because it can't be this way and, you know what I mean, I'm melancholy. It's a spirit going on with this. Because you don't feel like this the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. you, it's a spirit. You do not feel the same for the rest of the year. And soon as soon as the ball drop for New Year's. It's as if you were under some level of hypnosis. The ball dropped and you snapped out of it and you go back to normal again. <laughs> it's like hypnosis. And you wake up out of this thing and you go back to normal. You don't even realize that you were actually part of mind control. You were a part of a serious mind control. You turn on the mute, you turn on the radio, that's all you heard. You turn on the television, that's all you seen. Every place you went, it, you were bombarded with this particular spirit, not realizing that it was a program that would seep deep into your spiritual emotion. Everything you see, people giving out diamonds and people doing this and giving that, and you're like, man, I'm being left out. Not realizing that's the spirit it's putting on you. Okay? That's not the real world. They're sucking you in. That's not the real world. So they'll do anything to have you. Let me tell you, and this is how I'm perplexed. Just say if Christmas was about Christ, even though it's not. You have atheists that celebrate Christmas. What's that about? That, that lets you know right there that something is seriously wrong. They don't even believe in the Bible, and they, but they say, I deal with tradition, the family, and all that. I just get together for that. What? 
You don't even believe in Christ, but you celebrate Christmas. Everyone do it. All the other nations, when they come to America, they participate in it. Even though in their countries, they're dealing with something else. It's a spirit. And the world have drunk of the wine of her fornication. Right? Finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. You have, you, you have unrepentant homosexuals. They get together and put a tree in their house and celebrate Christmas. I thought it was about Christ. And if you're thinking about Christ, have it popped into your mind once to think that, okay, through Christ's sin, let me repent from this. Let me get my life right with Christ. So what is this holy day that everyone can participate in, in total love and not even acknowledge that Christ came for sin or have any forgiveness for sins. To let you know it, it was never about Christ. It don't have anything to do with Christ. Anyone can follow it. Anyone will celebrate it. Whether you believe in Christ or not. Another thing. If you don't believe in Christ. Why would you benefit from a day you claim Christ was born? Hey, all the Jewish people own the malls and all that. You don't tell them, you don't like Christ, do you? Mm -hmm. So why would you actually sell things to people that would endear them to someone whom you loathe? Because you know it's not about Christ either. You would have no part in it. You wouldn't take a dime from it if you didn't believe in Christ, right? You don't believe in Christ. You want nothing to do with Christmas, but yet... Jewish people are raking in. They got the diamonds. They say, come to Yale's. Come to, come to diamond. Come to get your diamonds. Every Christmas starts with K. But they don't celebrate Christmas. Now think about it. I'm just bringing some real, real understanding here. How is it that people don't believe in Christ can benefit from what they call Christ's birthday? Because they know it have nothing to do with Christ's birthday. It's not about acknowledging Christ. It never was. They only pull that game over in the churches. To have you participate in it. To make you believe it has something to do with Christ's birth. Read. It says uh, Christmas Day. Christmas, numero uno. Uh, Lady Day. Lady Day. Now I know a lot of you wondering what is Lady Day. A lot of you celebrate, well, Mother's Day. Don't even realize that's Semiramis' day. But this Lady Day, it's speaking of, it goes into what? It links into Easter also, but predominantly, it's what you would call Christmas Eve. See, there's a celebration on Christmas Eve by the pagan Satanists too. They're sacrificing children on Christmas Eve also. See, because they're saying the mother, the queen mother of heaven, which was in ancient Babylon, 500 years before Christ, conceived the child in the spring in her womb. And on Christmas Eve, she brought forth the child midnight going into, you understand, Tao Moses, December 25th day. See? So it's the whole thing. It's not just the 25th, it's the 24th also. In ancient Babylon. Read. Easter. Easter. Because that's when they claim, 500 years before Christ, that the Queen Mother of Heaven, she, you can read her in Jeremiah, the Most High told us to stay away from these people for celebrating this. The Queen Mother of Heaven came down in an egg. And the egg landed in the great river Euphrates and hatched on Easter day. And she was impregnated by God and had the child Talmuz on Mother's Eve, December 25th, nine months later. Okay. See that? See that? So you think you're following Christ, 
but you're really following a Babylonian custom that was instituted 500 years before Christ was born. Now I can, I can, I can worship the Most High. I can follow Christ and walk in the ways of Christ and understand that Christ is true and separate him from paganism because he never told us to follow these pagan days. He never told us to celebrate Easter. He never told us to celebrate Christmas. Not until the fourth century when Constantine came on the scene under the council of Nice Nicaea did the Roman pagan Satanist look to institute Christ's walk with ancient Babylonian and worships. I mean ancient Babylonian and Roman worships. They instituted that for the new world religion. That's why they call the Roman Catholic Church. Catholic means what? Universal. You're talking about the one world order. We're already in it. That was instituted back then when they hijacked Christ. Name and his work and put it on Nimrod. Had the people follow Nimrod using Christ. That's why Christ said in Matthew 24, be not deceived. By who? By man. Many shall deceive you. They shall say I'm Christ and shall they, they shall say they're Christ and shall deceive many. Who's doing that? The greatest deception is coming through Christmas. It's coming through Christians. And because only Christians are telling you that Christ was born on December 25th. That's a deception. So you're coming in Christ's name lying. You're lying. They switch that thing to say, well, Easter, let's just plug that in and say that's the day that Christ rose from the grave. Wait, how was that? a Who instituted that in the Bible as a, as a holy day? When you're really celebrating the Babylonian queen mother of heaven, the spring solstice. The same queen mother of heaven the Most High told us to stay away from in Jeremiah. The virgin mother. Whom the Catholic Church hijacked and hide who she is, Semiramis, and say it's Mary. Let me tell you, you you'll rather worship nothing at all and feel miserable than the fall prey to that particular holy day. Mm. I know some people say I just feel lonely and I just feel left out. Listen, you rather feel that. Because that's how Christ would feel if he was walking on this earth today. He would feel left out. Because he never told you to do this. Read. The Nativity of St. John and the Feast of Assumption. The Nativity of St. John. And the what? And the Feast of, Assum of the Assumption. And the Feast of the Assumption. Read down here for me. It says, uh, each of all... The festivals. Uh, the festivals of Rome are innumerable, but the five most important may be singled out for elucidation. Christmas Day, Lady Day, Easter, the Nativity of St. John, and the Feast of the Assumption. Each and all of these can be proved to be Babylonian. Be what? Each and all of these can be proven to be Babylonian. Every last one is Babylonian. Read. And first, as to the festival and honor of the birth of Christ, or Christmas. How comes it that the festival was connected with the 25th of December? Why was it connected with the 25th of December? Some people might ask that question, read. There is not a word in the scriptures about the precise day of his birth. There's not one scripture that tells you Christ was born December 25th. Read. Or the time of the year when he was born. What is recorded there implies that at what time soever his birth took place, it could have not been on the 25th of December. But what's implied in the scriptures, even though it don't give a date, but what it shows in the scriptures knows that he definitely wasn't born on December 25th. Read. At the time that the angel announced his birth to the shepherds of Bethlehem, they were feeding their flocks by night in the open fields. I tell you in the book of Luke, the second chapter, they were feeding their flocks at night. Now, you can't do that in Jerusalem or in Israel in December. It's still bitter cold. Now, someone tell me, listen, Mary and Joseph could not get a place to sleep. So they could not have been outside and rear a child in a dead of winter, December 25th in Israel. Outside.
impossibility. Shepherds do not graze their sheep at night, their flocks at night, because it's too cold. You'll kill them. See? So how is it in Luke, the second chapter, during the same time of Christ's birth, the shepherds were abiding in the field with their flocks at night, grazing. That means there was still grass and all that for them to eat and graze. Don't sound like December 25th to me, but they'll make you believe that December 25th in Israel is Hawaii. Okay? When there's cold, bitter climates in Israel, Christ was not born December 25th. Now what? Some people are going to say, well, I know he's not, but, you know, but it's about family with me. It's not about family because your family lives 364 days a year. You can pick any day to deal with your family. Why pick a day the pagans sacrifice children on? Yes, they do. You don't feel an airy and, 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 and sinister on Christmas at night at 12 midnight and you hear these chants going on with the, with the Pope and he's sitting there swinging this thing with this, this incense thing and walking around and they singing this, this music that sounds like it comes out of, out of a horror flick 12 midnight. You don't feel airy when you, when you cut on the television and see this? It's weird. Children are being sacrificed while he's doing this. Mm -hmm. Y'all talking about it's about the children and the elite sickness. I'm like, yeah, it's about the children. 12 midnight. Where they rape and destroy children, rape and, and, and on altars and kill children and make you think it's about you giving your children's gifts. I'll this real quick. Yes. This is a Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 22 through 23. It says, Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of the Most High. It says, On top of this, they erred in the knowledge of the Most High. But whereas they lived in great war of ignorance. So the people lived in great war of ignorance. Those so great plagues called they peace. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices. While they slew their children in sacrifices. We're in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter and verse. Uh, 14, verse 23. 14 and 23. So you're ignorant. You sit there, fa la 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 looking at your children under, next to the tree, next to the Nimrod stick, bowing down, trying to get a little gift or whatever. And they're sacrificing children. So while you're ignorant to what they're doing, while you're distracted, them children that are missing, they're sacrificing. Read on. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifice. While they slew their children in sacrifice. And I don't know a lot of y'all think, well, that's bad. That's, listen, it have always been. It, 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 it have all, outside of our people, Israel, these are how the nations get power. The gods demand child sacrifice. In order for, for them to stay in power, they must bring innocent blood. It's part of our society, folks. You've just been programmed to believe that this don't exist. So while you're celebrating Christmas, some child is screaming. Tied down to an altar by these demonic forces, by these demonic people who have yielded their lives to Satan. That's the reality of it. Now, we're talking about real Christmas now. Mm -hmm. This is the part of Christmas that they could never tell you. They have to give you the music. They have to give you people whom you think are in the Christmas spirit. Think about it. Who, who sung Christmas carols better than Whitney? And no sooner she was finished, she'd go in the back getting zooted and getting, getting blasted. All these entertainers on drugs and all that. So, it, so before you, you're like, oh my God, I'm, this is Christmas, oh my. And then they go right after the show and do all getting blasted, lines of cocaine, 
all types of stuff going on right after the Christmas carols. I know people like, man, you just raining on our parade, ain't you? Why are you going to take away Christmas? This is what happens. It's a show to suck your spirit in. So involuntarily, you are actually participating in what they do at night. You're just, you're just starting it. You're just warming it up so that they can finish it with a child sacrifice at 12 midnight. Satan is just breathing in all this worship. The whole earth is still for Satan. He's just sucking it in. All this spirit, everybody's, everyone's spirit is into him this day. He's just taking all the power. Right? Read on. Or use secret ceremonies. They use secret ceremonies, like at the Bohemian Grove. Or made revelings of strange rites. They kept neither lives nor marriages. They kept neither lives nor marriages because in the Bohemian Grove and all these other places, they're dealing with pedophilia, homosexuality. What do you think that movie Wise Eyed Shit with Tom Cruise was about? Why did they put on masks? These are married people, and part of their rituals on Christmas and all that is to go into these big mansions and just to cover their faces and do whatever they want with whomever they want. Merry Christmas. Hmm. See? These are the secret rites. We read about this in Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. And see, that's why they don't want you to have the Apocrypha in the Christian church. Because it shows you, it reveals the sinister lives of your leaders see let's go back uh, this is uh from Bab this lock here. Uh, the two Babylon's paragraph two go ahead it says um now no doubt the climate of Palestine is not so severe as the climate of this country yeah the Palestine is not severe as America but what but even there even in Palestine though the heat of the day, day be considerable even though the heat is okay the cold of the night from December to February is very piercing. There you go. You can have warm days, but at night, when the sun goes, it's get, it gets bitter cold in Palestine. So someone tell me how a baby is born in the dead of winter, outside. And not too far from them, the shepherds are grazing their, their flock. At night, they know that Christ wasn't born on December 25th. You can only teach this ideology to slaves. And you know, and it's not our fault. When I say slaves, that's not, I'm not trying to be condescending here. I'm just making, making a point. The only way that our people would worship this is if Something happened to our forefathers in which they was knocked over the head, dragged into another country, and was taught to worship that, and the, the children start to believe that's normal. A matter of fact, that's what happened. Hmm. Now, I understand why the Gentiles celebrate it. They've always celebrated it. They're pagans. They, let me tell you, these people are knowledgeable. Those that are in college and that, that are highly educated, they, they understand what it's really about. And they celebrate it nonetheless because they know the true meaning of it. And they embrace it. It's part of their culture. Satanism and pagan worship is a part of their DNA. It's part of what they do. And they loathe anyone that will come back to them and tell them that the way of their fathers are wrong. That you should be following the ways of the Bible. You should be following the ways of Christ and the Most High God. They hate you for it. Right? And they're like, listen, we're in charge. We stole you. We programmed you. How dare you tell us what to do? When you get in charge, you make the rules. But right now, we're in charge. See? That's how it works. Finish reading. 
and it was not the custom for the shepherds of Judea to watch their flocks in their open fields later than the end of October. There was no shepherds watching their flocks past October in Israel. That's a fact. Okay, so when you sing in silent night and holy night with a candle next to some statue someplace to, with a manger and a child, I mean, somebody need to come just take a truck and just, just go through it. Total madness. Read. It is in the last degree incredible. It's in the last degree incredible. That the birth of Christ could have taken place at the end of the December. There was no way Christ's birth could have happened December 25th. And a matter of fact, we're hearing this from history and from someone who, put, who compiled this information. And this guy is a preacher, a reverend from a church. And I'm looking at the bottom of page 92. It's, he don't have anything but ancient references in which he got the information from. The references is right in the book. Right? Even Lucifer appears as an angel of light. Remember that? So Satan is going to present his greatest day and make you believe it's a day of God. That's his point. That's how he's worshipped. Satan is the God of this world. He's the God of this world. And Christ told us, you can't serve two masters. Either you'll love one and cleave to the other. You can't say you're down with the most high from the throne and follow in the fallen God, Lucifer. See? Read. Oh, this is page 92. I'm going to jump down to the middle. Of the paragraph it states um at the birth among us lock him. yeah just get the, the, the points there right mm -hmm. at the birth of Christ every woman and child was to be taxed at the city whereto they belonged exactly it was a time of taxation according to the scriptures whether some had long journeys but the middle of winter was not fitting for such a business exactly how can you have the Romans taxing people in a dead of winter how can you travel throughout all the countries all the areas and get money in a dead of winter taxation was a time usually right after the harvest because that's when people had their increase so it was still around the october time during taxation or around that area right read especially for women with child and children to travel in Therefore, Christ could have not been born in the depth of winter. He could not have been born in the depths of winter. It was taxation time. And the Romans were not sending out their, their armies to collect taxes in the day of the winter. Okay? Didn't work that way. So Christ was not born on December 25th. He's just bringing some common sense reasoning here. So according to the scriptures, even though it doesn't give a day, it definitely wasn't December 25th. All right? I need you to go over here real quick. Mm -hmm. It says... Which says... Uh, how yeah. Then? How then? How, how then did the Romish church... I'm on page 93 now. Read. How then did the Romish, Romish church... How is it that the Romish church... Fixed on December the 25th as Christmas Day? So how did they come up with December 25th is the question. You might have the same question. Go ahead. Why thus, long before the 4th century and long before the Christian era, itself a festival was celebrated among the heathen? He says, before the 4th century, that same festival was celebrated amongst the heathen. Read. At that precise time of the year. At that precise time of year. How is it now, before the 4th century, is worshipped as heathens? Now, after the 4th century, it's Christ's birthday. Now, mind you, it's talking about heathens who was worshiping this time of day, not only just with the Romans, even before the Romans. That means while Christ was on the earth, December 25th was being worshiped by the Romans. While Christ was walking the earth and no one was, was attaching him to it. 
right? Read. In honor of the birth of the son of the Babylonian queen of heaven. Well, there you go. December 25th. What happened on December 25th? In honor of the birth of the son. Of the son. The birth of the son. Not the birth of Christ now. The birth of the son of who? Of the Babylonian queen of heaven. Of the Babylonian queen mother of heaven. Semiramis and her son, the virgin son, Talmuz. See? Now, even back in old time, it tells, tell us in the book of Jeremiah that our women went off preparing and baking cakes to the queen mother of heaven. And that's why the Most High began to destroy us. And had our men go out and get the wood and all that so that she can bake cakes and do all this for these celebrations to Semiramis. So that we can do all these celebrations to the Queen Mother of Heaven. This was before there was any such woman as Mary. Now it's the same thing today. The women get all into it. And the men do all the work to make it what it is. But the women is a spirit behind this. Because why? It's a worship of a woman. That's why the women aren't dared to be in it. It's a worship of Semiramis. Okay? The Queen Mother of Heaven of the book of Jeremiah. It tells us this. Let's go to Jeremiah real quick. What is it? The 44th verse, right? 44. Jeremiah 44 and around the 15th verse. Let's get it real quick. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 44, uh, verse 17. Read it. As a matter of fact, I started 18. Yes, go straight there. Go ahead. But since we left off to burn incense, uh, 17 is good. But we will certainly do it so everything goeth forth from our own mouth. So now we begin to do things we wanted to do hmm. in the Old Testament. That's why we're serving Gentiles today. Our foreparents say, well, listen, we're going to do what we want to do instead of following the God that led us out of Egypt. Read. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. To burn incense to the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Go ahead. For then we had plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven. But since we went off to burn incense to the queen mother of heaven, that means to start the worship. You notice they got incense and all that burning candles in the Roman Catholic Church. This was years before the Romans were on the scene to show you where they got it from. Read. We have wanted all things. That means since we begin to follow the queen mother of heaven, we have wanted all things. That means now the most high is not providing for us anymore. See? Because we decided to go off and burn incense and worship another god. Read. And have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And we have been consumed by the sword. That means now other nations can take us down. And the famine, which is lack of food. So our worship, our false worships leads to our poverty. Leads to our us being destitute. See that? You see why the Gentiles want to push Christmas on you? Because they know it makes our God angry. See? That's where the Romans get this from. Now, in our modern time, they, they realize, okay, we can't just straight off tell people they, they're following fallen angels and, and, and gods and deities. But everyone likes Christ. So let's just say that Semiramis, let's just put her to the side. We'll just worship her in our private elite societies. We'll just put her to the side for us. And we'll just tell people that's Mary in Christ. The people are ignorant. They don't, they don't care. Just give them their traditions. They don't care. They're ignorant. Let's set up some pastors who, who, who can speak nice and, and just who can, who can sing a little bit. And, 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 and the people are sheep. They'll follow them. They'll never look into the Bible and realize that they're worshiping Satan and empowering us to rule over them. And we'll take their children and sacrifice them. Okay? That's how it goes. The real spirit of Christmas. Read. Uh, verse 19. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven. And poured out drink offerings unto her. 
Did we make unto her cakes to worship her? Then we made us what? Cakes to worship her. Cakes to worship her. And poured out drink offerings unto her without our men. Without our men. See that? So the women would do this irregardless. Now, that might be the first women's liberal movement right there, ain't it? Hmm. And even till this day, even if a guy don't want to celebrate Christmas, you have some women that'll be like, listen, I don't, you're going to give my children Christmas. I don't care. Okay? You, you can, there's going to be somebody out there that's going to give my children Christmas. That's how it is. It's a spirit. Right? Now let's get back there. Uh, why thus long before the 4th century and long before the Christian era itself, a festival was celebrated among the heathen <laughs> at that precise time of the year in honor of the birth of the Babylonian Queen of Heaven or of the birth of the son of the Babylonian Queen of Heaven. <clears throat> and it may be fairly presumed that in order to conciliate the heathen and to swell the number of the nominal adherents of Christianity, the same festival was adopted by the Roman Church. It was adopted by who? By the Roman Church. It was adopted by the Roman Church to get pagans and Satan worshipers to participate in the Christian Church. Fourth century under the Council of Nicaea. So really the compromise wasn't with those of truth. The compromise wasn't with us. I mean, we, 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 we lost more than anyone because the pagans can continue to do everything. So it was the compromise, just so you can use Christ and Mary's name. But everything else the pagans did, they continue to do in the church. Using Christ's name. Oh, don't worry about the Sabbath. That's just the pagans worship Sunday. Let's do Sunday. Oh, don't worry about that. You know, you know, just say Christ rose from the dead and we'll just give it the queen mother of heaven Easter. Just say Christ rose from rose uh, from the grave that day and went to heaven and we'll give them Easter. They'll they'll suck it up. They don't know any better. Uh, we know Nimrod. Uh, Nimrod was incarnated through Tammuz on December 25th, according to ancient Babylonian legend. But don't worry about it. Just tell the people that it was Christ born December 25th. They don't research anything. Let them go ahead and worship that. Let them, let them cut down a perfectly natural tree that's helping us with oxygen and put it in their house. They don't worship anything. They, they don't know anything. Let them just decorate a tree and just run around and look at it. And just have their have their children bow to something, uh, uh, what I would call a concocted bomb. Some people they, they sit there with the tree, which is wood, wrap electric around it, which is fire, and then you know they want to keep the tree looking nice, so they'll take some water and put it up under the tree to keep it going, so that the pines you can smell the pines. Hey, you didn't you didn't made yourself a bomb, and wonder, <laughs> and and wonder why. There's so many house fires during the Christmas time. This is what our people do. And they be like, the people don't know. Just tell them it's about Christ. Just tell them some fat guy named St. Nicholas going to come down a chimney and give you gifts. And we're going to scramble Satan's name around and just call him Santa. Coming out of the fire with the Yule log which is the Yule child. Just give them that. They'll just accept Satan as their, as their Lord. This is how it happens, brothers and sisters. Satan coming out of the fire. That's Santa. And I think there's something going on this week where there's this big conversation about some news anchors say that Christ, you know that Christ was white. Boys and girls don't believe that, or whatever the case is, when that really shouldn't be the discussion. And I think they did that on purpose, to make this into some race discussion, just to put Christmas on the table, when really the question should be, what are we celebrating Christ's birthday for on December 25th? Instead of, that should be the conversation about, instead of talking about the color of St. Nick, okay, Read on. 
It says, um, the festival, the same festival was adopted by the Roman church. Go ahead. Given it only the name of Christ. Given it only the name of Christ. This tendency on the part of the Christians to meet paganism halfway. To meet paganism halfway. Now, where would Christ tell his, tell his followers, the disciples, to meet pagans halfway? Either you follow Christ or you don't. Don't come into church if you're going to worship on Sunday. Don't come into church if you're going to celebrate December 25th. That's what, that, that's what, that's what Peter and them would have told them. That's what Paul would have told them. How can you now be baptized for the remissions of your sins and renounce paganism and then come in and become a pagan here? What sins are being forgiven if you can do the same thing in the world? Doesn't make any sense. And now that's why the church is what it is today. You start moving the bar and saying, well, let's compromise. Now you're going to have homosexuals running the churches. You have women running the churches. You have total chaos and confusion where the bars move so much. You don't even understand or know what sin is anymore. And it happened with them first compromise. If they're a liar on Christ, what they care about the rest of the laws? If they will lie and tell you Christ was born December the 25th and the worship on Sunday, which is pagan, and you accept it, then who cares about the rest of the laws? If you lied on Christ, you think you care about the people? You can do whatever you want in the church and then say, well, listen, you can't judge me. You without sin cast the first stone when Christ wasn't even relating to a woman who could continue to sin. Right after he told that woman, right after he defended that woman, he told her, you go forth and you sin no more. I'm not going to keep on protecting you here. But he was making a point to those guys who were hypocrites who were looking to stone her when they were doing the same thing. That was the point. He wasn't bringing that point out where everyone can use that scripture to defend perpetual, unrepentant sin. But that's what they do today. You have a homosexual in the lead of the head of the choir to move his way up to top usher and deacon. Oh, I can not, not, man, the pastor point, the pastor seat ain't too far from me now. Now he's preaching and saying, you can't throw stones. And it all started if they lied on Christ. They can lie on everything. That's what makes this Christmas thing so deep. No one is defending Christ here. Who's defending Christ? Who's defending the church that was established before the pagans came and tore it apart, turned it upside down before the Romans came and injected their wine that would make the earth to stagger to a point of non-belief? Right? Finish. It says, uh, this tendency on the part of the Christians to meet paganism halfway, Make, meet paganism halfway, was very early developed. We find that Tertullian, even in his day about the, about the year 230, bitterly lamenting the inconsistency of the disciples of Christ in this respect, and contrasting, that, and contrasting it with the strict fidelity of the pagans to their own superstition. By us, says he, who are strangers to Sabbaths and new moons and festivals once acceptable to God, the Saturnalia, the Feast of January, the Brumalia, the Matronalia, are now frequented. Gifts are carried to and fro. New Year's Day pre uh, pre presents are made with den. And sports and banquets are celebrated with uproar. Oh, how much more faithful are the heathen to their religion who mm. take special care to adopt no solemnity from the Christians. Now, check that out. The heathens hold to their religion. They are devout concerning their religion. Only the Christians compromise. See? Because you're not going to have these heathens. You're not going to take away the heathens' Christmas. Now, they'll tell the Christians, well, listen, if you're willing to compromise your way of life and your Lord and Savior, then I'll come into your church. 
See? That's how it works. I remember going to a church and looking at a tree, uh, I say it all the time, so big that it was bent over. A black church. And the God, the God was like, listen, something's going to leave out of here and it's not going to be that tree. I couldn't get my eye off this tree. I came to talk to him about the word and who's Israel and how do we can come. And my eyes just kept on. I'm like, let's make this. Let's, let's put a little agreement here. If we can, if, if I bring forth what's true out of this Bible and we both can see the truth. And that tree can be proven as evil out of the Bible. Will you take that tree down? And, and teach the people in your church what that or leave it up before you take it down and teach it out of the Bible that it's evil and have your followers and those I'm like you don't even got to tell them I showed you this he said get out he says he said get out of my church <laughs> I left he didn't even want to hear whether or not that tree was correct and it looked like they put three, four hours up on that tree. Hmm. They, 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 they put the fake snow on it. They, they had balls hanging off of it. It was bent over. They, they had everything. They had gifts all up under the tree. They, they had the whole thing going. The tree had to be at least, man, they had a truck to bring in that tree. So the compromise is with believers. The pagans will never compromise. And they're laughing at Christians. We had a pagan that came on one of the shows and said, it's ignorant that Christians don't realize that we are the mother of their religion. Came straight out. Say everything the Christians follow came from us. And they worship the god Pan, which is the horned god. And then he went down the line. He said, Christmas is this. New Year's is this. He says, Sunday worship is this. He, said, he gave us the ancient names of all of it and said that Christians are deceived. None of them are following Christ. They're following the two-horned pan, which is Satan. A pagan. And we, then we had a Christian. We, had an, we invited a Christian on that would be on with the pagan to talk about the holy days together. And you would never guess the Christian pastor backed out of it. The pagan was willing to come on. The Christian paid pastor backed out of the conversation because he knew where it was going. That a pagan was going to come on and give him the origin of Christmas and Sunday. No way. A pastor going to put himself out like that. On record, he would lose everything. But the pagan was willing to come on and, and give him the origin of all his days and then show him how the Christian church adopted his pagan ways and where it happened at. And see, and that's why some people ask why we invite some of these people on who are non-believers or whatever the case is. We invite, we invite people on that will tell the truth so that we can uncover the darkness to release our people. Who are in darkness? We have to uncut. We have to actually let them tell you you worship in Satan, right? That's why we let invite these different guests on who may not have the same understanding we have. A pagan going to come on and he's going to uphold the the content of his religion and he feels slighted. They feel slighted. They feel the Christians are getting all the credit when they're pagans. They should be acknowledging pagans. Saturnalia, like it says here. This reverend went into it. Saturnalia, doing a time right after Christmas in January when there's festivities, all the people getting together. And, and, and in Rome, oh man, all types of sodomitis act activity going on. Men with men, women with women, all types of madness. That's what Saturnalia was. Sounds familiar, don't it? Read. Upright men strove to stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasy went on. 
So the church, with the exception of a small remnant, was submerged under pagan superstition. That Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. The time of the year and the ceremonies with which it is still celebrated prove its, or prove its origin. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the Queen of Heaven, was born at this very time. Even before the Babylonians, Isis' son was worshipping ancient Egypt. See, these were the gods the Most High destroyed who were nothing before he led our people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So if, we, if, these, if these gods didn't do us any good in Egypt, our God was greater. Then the Most High destroyed the Babylonians for us. If their gods were great, why aren't their empires standing? And now, even to this day, because what, the same worships go from one empire to the next. Now, the only thing that stands is that our people through ignorance get caught into this. That's what stands. The Gentiles, they're going to be pagans. That's what they do. What about the children of Israel? Now, there is Gentiles who understand that their fathers were worshiping Satan, who denounce it altogether that follow the truth of Christ and the church. That's good. Those are the same Gentiles in spirit that that operated in the past you had gentiles in the past who denounced their paganism because it tell you in in the new testament the laws that was given to the gentiles they had to put off fornication in those pagan worships if they were to attend the church so there are gentiles who can denounce the worship of their father and follow truth see and i'm saying this because this is no uh indictment on he, on, on, on Gentiles who are trying to follow the truth, who are looking to follow Christ and to denounce the ways of their fathers. Read. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Yule is the child the name for an infant or little child. That's why it says Yule Tide songs. That's mm -hmm. what it comes from. Ancient Babylonian. Read. And as the December, the 25th of December, the 25th of December, was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon Anglo ancestors Yule Day, or the Child's Day, and the night that preceded it, preceded it, Mother Night. Mother Night, which is Christmas Eve. See? Have nothing to do with Christ at all. Never had anything to do with Christ or Mary. The Babylonians actually plagiarized that. They took that from ancient Babylonia. The Romans did. They took it from ancient Babylonia. Read. Long before they came in contact with Christianity. That sufficiently proves its real character. Far and wide in the realms of paganism was the birthday observed. This festival was calmly believed to have had only an astronomical character, referring simply to the completion of the sun's yearly course and the commencement of a new cycle. But there is indubitable evidence that the festival is in question had a much higher reference than this, that it commemorated not merely the figurative birthday of the sun and the renewal of its course, but the birthday of the Grand Deliverer, among the Sabians of Arabia who regarded the moon and not the sun as the visible, visible symbol of the favorite object of their idolatry, the same period was observed as the birth festival. Thus we read in Stanley's Sabian philosophy on the 24th of the 10th month, that is December, according to our reckoning. You notice it calls December the 10th month there? Mm -hmm. Because it's really the 10th month. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. The Arabians celebrated the birthday of the Lord. That See, is even the Arabians. Read. That is the moon. The who? The moon. They worship the moon on December 25th. See? Read. The Lord The Lord Moon was the great object. Hmm. You gotta laugh at it, ain't it? They sit there on December 25th. Oh, there he is. 
It says, uh, the Lord Moon was the great object of Arabian worship. And the Lord... <laughs> Salakia, this is, yo, yo this get, is it to, get it together, brother. This is foolishness. Don't this worry about right. it. December 25th, the sun coming out. <laughs> and it, it'd be the moon. <laughs> and these are the people we look to to bring us Islam. Hmm. Talking about them, too. They out of their minds. This is what happens when we begin to follow the ways of the other nations. The nations are crazy. The hmm. kings of the nations are crazy. Okay, you read it, and when you get some understanding, it, 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 it becomes comical to some degree. That how can a people so ignorant, so out of their mind, become leaders of this earth? But it tell you in Deuteronomy 30, 32, hmm. that he's going to use the foolishness, that, that he's going to actually put fools over us because we disobeyed his law, statutes, and commandments. That he would put idiots over us. It's obvious that, that that scripture has been fulfilled. When the Arabians who looked at December the 25th and think that the moon was born on December 25th as the sun. Mm. Read on. It says in that Lord Moon, according to them, was born on the 24th of December, which clearly shows that the birth which they celebrated had no necessary connection with the course of the sun. It had nothing to do with the sun, and that's true because with the understanding, the new cycle of the sun don't come in mm. until near March or March. It don't even come in nowhere near December. But really, the origin of that goes back to ancient Babylon too. They just mm. took it someplace else. It goes back to ancient Babylon with Nimrod, Ceramicus, and Talmud, where they claim that Nimrod, after Nimrod was killed, that a tree erected over Nimrod's grave. And then Talmud would come in December 25th as an incarnate son of who? An incarnate son of Nimrod. Okay? Read on. It is worthy of special note, too, that if Christmas Day among the ancient Saxons of this island was observed to celebrate the birth of any lord of the host of heaven, the case must have been precisely the same here as it was in Arabia. The Saxons, as is well known, regarded the sun as a female divinity and the moon as a male. It must have been the birthday of the Lord Moon, therefore and not of the sun, that was celebrated by them on the 25th of December, even as the birthday of the same Lord Moon was observed by the Arabians on the 24th of December. The name of the Lord Moon in the East must have been many, or Manai. For this appears the natural interpretation of the divine statement in Isaiah uh, 65 and 11. Let me get one more thing before we go. Let's go to the Christmas tree real quick. Read that. On page 97 in the two Babylons, the Christmas tree. It says, the Christmas tree, now so common among us, was equally common in pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. Read it again. The Christmas tree. The Christmas tree. Now so common among us, was equally common in pagan Rome. Pagan Rome. And pagan Egypt. And in pagan Egypt. Read in Egypt, that tree was the palm tree. In Rome, it was the fir. The palm tree denoting the pagan Messiah as Baal Tamar. As Baal Tamar. See? Read. The fir, the fir referring to him as Baal Berith. The mother of Adonis, the sun god and great uh, mediatorial divinity, was mystically said to have been changed into a tree. See? There you go. Here go your Christmas tree. Read. And when in that state to have brought forth her divine son. And in that state brought forth her divine son. Read. If the mother was a tree, the son must have been recognized as the man, 
as the man, the branch. The man, the branch. See this mess they're dealing with? Read on. And this entirely accounts for the putting of the Yule log into the fire on Christmas Eve and the appearance of the Christmas tree the next morning. As Zeroashta, the seed of the woman, which was also signified in Nigina, or born of the fire. He born of the what? Born of the fire. Now, is that Satan or what? Born of the fire? You got Satan, Santa Claus, coming out of the fire, the Yule log? Read. He has to enter the fire on Mother Night. He has to enter the fire on Mother Night. That's Santa coming down your chimney. Read it again. He has to enter into to the fire on Mother Night. He has to enter the fire on Mother Night. That's Christmas Eve. Santa coming down the chimney on the witching hour, 12 midnight. Read. That he may be born the next day out of it as the branch of God. Or the tree that brings all the divine gifts to men. Hold up. The tree that does what? Brings all the divine gifts to men. Isn't that Santa that brings all the divine gifts to, to the little children? We're talking about Satan here, brothers and sisters. A preacher found this out by going into ancient records of December 25th that predated Christ. In ancient civilizations. So Santa don't start with St. Nick, brothers and sisters. That's a deception. That's the cover. Read. But why, it may be asked, does the, does the enter the fire the symbol of a log? Or does he enter the fire as the symbol of a log? Go ahead. To understand this, it must be remembered that the divine child born at the winter solstice was born as a new incarnation of the great God. He was born as a new incarnation of the great God. And see, and that's why they teach you in Christian church that Jesus is God incarnate. It's not speaking of our God, the God from the throne. It's speaking of Satan, Semiramis, and Nimrod. See? Read on. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. let me give you the symbol. Let me show you the symbol of the coin that embodies this particular day with the Yule log. The serpent, the serpent wrapped around the Yule log. There you go. Put that in, put that in your fire. I mean, put that in your chip, in, in your uh, fireplace. And, and throw on Nat King Cole, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. See, y'all see that? That's the Yule log with the serpent around it, which embodies that particular scenario of the Yule child. This is what they're hiding with Santa Claus. The whole legend of Santa Claus coming down the chimney and all that is don't, it's a story made up from the ancient pagan worships of the serpent in the Yule child, in the Yule law. Satan is the cover. That's why they scrambled his name and called him Santa. Now let's go into the tree in Jeremiah the 10th chapter to see what the Bible have to say uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1 read it hear ye the word of the Most High hear ye the word which the Most High speaketh unto you hear the words that the Most High God speak unto you O house of Israel O house of Israel thus saith the Most High learn not the way of the heathen learn not the way of the heathen don't and follow their ways their ways are contrary to the ways of our God, to the ways of our forefathers. Learn not the way of the heathen. Read. 
and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven now that signs also go into the luminaries and notice in ancient Arabia the signs like the Sun and the moon was actually held as part of a connection to the rituals of December 25th read for the heathen are dismayed at them for the heathen are dismayed at them now it shows you their their, their, their pathetic worships read for the customs of the people are vain their customs mean nothing at all they have nothing to do with the most high read for one cut of a tree out of the forest now it's going into the customs for one cut of the tree out of the forest the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe go ahead they deck it with silver and with gold they deck this tree this custom which the most high told us not to follow the way of the heathen they deck it with silver and with gold so the Jews or the Israelites in the Bible were not to do this see that the heathens do this read they fasten it with nails and with hammers. And they fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it move not. That it move not. That's your Christmas tree. They are upright as the palm tree, but spake not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Go ahead. Be not afraid of them. And it's telling our people, don't be afraid of them. Now, why would you need to be afraid of this particular tree? Because what comes with denying it? What comes when, when you reject it? The same way today. You try to go against it and all that, and the people try to come against you. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to follow something pagan, now the whole world is against you. But Jeremiah told us, don't be afraid of, of this tree. Don't be afraid of, of what comes with this. Read. For they cannot do evil. Trees can't do evil. It's a tree. Read. Neither also is it in them, in them to do good. They're just, it's just a tree. Don't, don't make this tree into a God. Don't bring this tree to life. And don't care what people say if you deny it and tell the truth about it. Now, I'm sure that a lot of pastors in the churches read this scripture already and know this scripture. I've read the Bible backwards and forth and know it's the Christmas tree. But they cannot let this one scripture come in the way of their, one of their greatest paydays. So they'll put this scripture under grace too. Anything they don't want to follow, they put under grace. But I never see the pastors and preachers put tithes under grace. <laughs> Try it. Be in the church and have them pay tithes and say, listen, if I don't pay tithes, am I under grace? <clears throat> <laughs> That's a good question. Am I under grace? So they pick and choose what laws they want to uphold. They are strained at a gnat, but swallow a camel, like Christ said. They are strained at the most little thing. Oh, you can't do that. You can't do this. But yet, you lie on Christ. You, you, you perpetuating the lie against the Lord and Savior you claim you're teaching. Let's get Matthew 5 and 17 real quick. And let's end it with 2 Corinthians 10 and 20. When you get a chance, if you can, and you notice some of the books that we, we, we have ordered, some of the books we have, which are ancient books, which are good books, like these and what else we got? Uh, we, ha we have a book, uh, Lost Tribes in the Promised Land. We started promoting that book and bringing that out, the truth concerning the ten tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. That one book, which I actually was able to buy on some auction years ago for about $40. Because I found it on, in an auction someplace and they had it shipped to me. That same book now is $1,300. So now they're pricing it out of the way of the poor. So that you cannot read what happened to the ten tribes, which are the Indian tribes, which were speaking Hebrew, when the and, and knew who they were, knew they were Ephraim and all that over there. 
It's written up in the book and it was documented that the 10 tribes that went over into America knew who they were when the Europeans got there. The book is 1300 bucks now. So a lot of books that we've been putting out, like I had an original two Babylon. This is the paperback. I had an original one that I lost a long time ago, but that book is up there 900 to a thousand dollars now. Get these books while you can. Get these books. It's going to start pricing them out altogether and making it where certain people can't get them. A lot of these books are in your institutions. They know the truth. But the poor, the slaves, the sheep are not supposed to know. Let's read Matthew 5 and 17 real quick. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Christ says, think not that I've come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. The Most High did not send Christ to destroy what was established in the Old Testament. The holy days of God still stand. Christ confirms those days. He didn't say, well, listen, I came to take down the holy days in the Bible and give you Christmas. Okay, that's what the Christian churches are saying. If you bring them Passover, any holy days that the Most High said that we, we must hold throughout our generations forever, any of those holy days you will bring to them, they'll be like, man, you can't judge me concerning the holy day. Who are we talking about judging you concerning the holy day? We're asking why you're not following them. It's in the Bible. But yet, you will come up with your own holy days or the holy days that were given to you when you sip that wine, that chalice, of the whore of Babylon. You excuse the sin that came with those holy days from Rome. So you 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 just look down as as the holy days of the Bible as something satanic and look down on those and try to defend known pagan demonic days. And tell and then give a scripture in Colossians saying, Let no man judge you concerning the holy day when the prophets and the teachers didn't say, didn't mean that. The holy days it was speaking of were the holy days of the Bible. It wasn't speaking of pagans worshiping Christmas. It wasn't saying that let no man judge you if you celebrate Ramadan. Let no man judge you if you celebrate Christmas. It was saying let no man judge you if you're not following the holy days written up in the Bible. Because you can't judge because Christ reformed those holy days. He didn't do away with them. He reformed them. Now you must institute Christ in the holy days. That's what the, the New Testament is speaking of. Not doing it under Moses now, but following those same holy days under Christ. So Christ didn't come to do away with the law. And I'm speaking specifically right now of the holy days because they try to use Christ to say that they can celebrate Christmas. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Don't even think in your mind that Christ come to destroy the law. Read. I came not to destroy. I am not come to destroy the law or the prophets. The law or the prophets are the new are, are, are what's written up in the Old Testament, the whole Old Testament. And a lot of you Christians don't want to go there because you see that Christmas tree back there in Jeremiah did. See? You see the Queen Mother of Heaven in Jeremiah, the 44th chapter. But you'd rather believe it's done away with, with Christ so that you can continue your paganism. But Christ says the laws and the prophets still stand. He did not come to destroy it. You're ignorant if you ignore it. To your own peril. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Christ came to fulfill what was written in the Old Testament, which means if the Old Testament is done away with, then why did Christ come? What is he fulfilling if it's done away with? See? <laughs> Read. For verily I say unto you. Verily Christ say unto us. So heaven and earth pass. Is there still a heaven and earth? Yes. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it all till all be fulfilled. That means the law will stand as long as there's an earth, according to Christ's own words. Read. 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments. So if you break these commandments that Christ gave us in the, in, in the law and in the prophets, which is the Old Testament, read. And shall teach men so. And now you're teaching people it's done away with. And replacing the holy days of God, which are Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, replacing it with pagan days. If you begin to teach others to do this, read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. According to Christ, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. How can you speak of holy days and uphold pagan Roman satanic holy days and ignore the holy days in the Bible? Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them. That if you do and teach what's written in the Old Testament. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The same shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. That's crystal clear. That's Christ. You can't get around Christ. And if you try to ignore that or try to go to some scripture to try to undo that, you are an antichrist. You can't say, let me go to Paul and try to out, outrank Christ when you don't understand Paul. There's no scripture that Paul has pulled out there that will undo what Christ said. You just don't understand Paul's writings. Let's get 1 Corinthians 10 and 20 last scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. But I say. But I say. That the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. And if you want to go to Paul, go ahead. That the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to who? To devils. That means all their holy days and worships, they are not doing to the Most High. They're doing to devils, demons. See? That's what's behind all these holy days. In order for these so-called magistrates or politicians to stay in charge, they must worship and ride the goat. Period. They must worship Satan. They must acknowledge and sacrifice to demons. See? And what are they sacrificing to demons? Children. And while you run around talking about, well, it's about the children. You don't even understand on the other side of that it is about the children. It's about your elite politicians sacrificing them on the same day that you so-called think Christ was born. Read. And not to the most and, and not to the most high. It's not to God. Don't try to put God in your Christmas. Not the God from the throne, anyway. Just come straight out like the pagans do. They're doing it the same day you're doing it. Just ask them who they're worshiping. They're worshiping the horn god. So don't try to attach Christ to your paganism. Read. I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. And it's in the New Testament that the Most High don't want us to have fellowship with devils. There's demons and demonic rituals attached to all these so-called Western holy days. Read. 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord. You can't say you're down with the Most High God. And the cup of devils. And drink from the same cup as devils. Read. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table. You can't sit at the Lord's table. And of the table of devils. And sitting there with, with Satan on December the 25th with you. Read. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Or we, will we make our Lord mad? Read. Are we stronger than he? Are we stronger than he? The answer is no. Read. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful. But all things are not expedient. All things are not expedient. And that means just because you think you can do it, doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> just because the door is open for you to do it, is it right? Paul saying, is saying no. So some of you might think it's lawful because I'm thinking about Christ on this day. But is it expedient? Is it right? The answer is no. So with that, that concludes the lesson on the in-depth understanding of Christmas and the origin of Christmas. And then you can make up your mind whether or not it's true or whether or not you would like to just continue to follow it. Because that's between you and the most high. But you cannot say that the information concerning it was not presented before you. And that's the key thing. 
The Most High always give revelation and understanding of truth, and it's up to us to make a choice. And guess what? It started from the beginning. The Most High always lay out a choice. You can take the tree of life, or you can take the tree of good and evil, which makes you feel good. It's your choice. And with that, I'm going to say shalom concerning this particular lesson. Shalom.